Welcome again to this edition of Meet the Candidates. I'm David Nicholas, and we welcome as our guest Congressman John Molinar of Midland. He is seeking a fourth term as a representative in Congress for Michigan's 4th District. Congressman, good to see you, and thanks for joining us. David, great to see you virtually, and uh, thanks for having me back on your program. Congratulations on the win in the August primary, and we appreciate you being with us. In the first minute or two, tell us about uh, your, yourself, your background, and the experience you're bringing to this campaign. Well, thank you, David. And, uh, you know, I serve in Congress. I serve on the Appropriations Committee. Uh, there we work to fund important priorities like the National Institutes of Health, the research that's being done for a vaccine, the Centers for Disease Control, and I also am on the... Uh, agriculture subcommittee, which includes the FDA. And so we're all hands on deck right now, uh, working to defeat the virus. Um, prior to serving in Congress, uh, I'd served in the state legislature, got my start as a chemist originally. And so have done different things as a chemist, as an educator, uh, but I'm thankful to be able to serve the people of Michigan's fourth congressional district in Congress. What would you say is the primary issue? We'll begin with one and, and see how many we can cover in terms of uh, the primary issue that is uh, facing yourself as a candidate and the voters as they approach this uh, election in November. Well, I think all of us want to make sure that people are safe, uh, that we develop this vaccine, that we develop better uh, medicines to treat the coronavirus, because ultimately we need to defeat the virus. The next step is to rebuild the economy. And that's something I believe very strongly that we have the capability of doing that. We had the strongest economy uh, in the last 50 years going before the virus. We know how to get this started again. So people are working, contributing to the economy and all of us thrive here in Michigan. So those are two of the goals and working very hard on that in Congress. What would be the primary approach you would have as to rebuilding the the economy we we had a strong economy obviously it's been set back by covid but what approaches would you bring to the rebuild should you win re-election well if we re win re-election and if we regain the republican majority we've already committed to america that we would uh, pass legislation a new round of the paycheck protection program uh, funding it at 200 billion dollars and that's something that has helped 93% of the jobs relating to small businesses in my district, they've been helped through that program. Uh, secondly, we need to make sure we extend the child tax credit. That was part of the tax reform that we did and was very successful in getting our economy going and making sure that families uh, who are working and trying to support the needs of their children you know, are able to navigate this rebuild of our economy. So those are two key priorities. Of course, you wanna see strong continual funding of the Great Lakes. Uh, the last, uh, we've funded it at the highest level in the past nine years recently. And we wanna make sure these Great Lakes continue to thrive for our economy, as well as just our quality of life that we enjoy here in Michigan. If we move from the economics being rebuilt following uh, an emergence, we hope sooner rather than later from COVID-19, what would you say is another primary issue that the voters are facing this November? Well, I think people want to make sure that we have uh, the opportunity for every American to fulfill the American dream. And that means opportunities for people of all backgrounds, ethnicities. And we want to make sure that we have the rule of law that protects our community. So uh, keeping our community safe from whether it's COVID or um, violence and uh, disorder, uh, those are important priorities. We need to support our law enforcement. And at the same time, we also need to make sure that they have the tools that they need to do their jobs effectively and uh, you know, police with the community. And so those are key priorities. We also wanna make sure that the foundations of our country are preserved. When you think of uh, America as we know it and we love it, we don't wanna see that change. We have uh, freedoms here and we wanna make sure those freedoms are protected, our constitutional rights. If we look at the issue of, of the uh, law enforcement rule of law, are there changes that need to be made or upholding the laws that are on the books? What is your approach? 
Well, I think there need to be changes. Uh, I think that uh, Senator Tim Scott has had some excellent legislation that unfortunately the Senate has not been able to pass that would improve uh, resources for police. Uh, we would also need to provide new and more body cameras so that there's accountability for the police. But at the same time, our police need to know that we have our their back and that we support uh, their work putting their lives on the line for us as citizens, keeping our communities safe. So there are improvements that can be made, but at the same time, we need to send a strong message that we don't agree with defunding the police. We don't agree with de dismantling the police. We want to make sure our police work for the citizens of our country. How do we address the issues that we have faced in regards to that opposition to law enforcement. When you talk about preserving the foundations and the, the idea of fulfilling the American dream and all of these coming together, how do we preserve that in this time of social unrest that we have seen? Well, we want to make sure that, uh, first of all, that uh, there is a, a effort to reconcile between the races and to improve uh, our dynamics of all races. And we want to start believing the best in each other and coming together as a com country. And I believe very strongly in that. At the same time, we need to recognize that if changes are to be made, they need to be made in a law uh, abiding approach rather than looting, rather than rioting. Um, if people have uh, concerns, they have the right to petition our government for change. They have the right to uh, protest. And we want to preserve those rights. At the same time, we want to be productive in bringing our country together under the rule of law and respect for private property and, of course, respect for the protection of human life. Are there changes to the laws on the books? Similar question as we looked at it from uh, the economic uh, perspective that need to be changed in, in terms of legislation or is it a matter of they also say you can't legislate morality. So how do we look at bringing parties together with how the the, the races and, and, and the groups uh, reconcile some of those differences and can move forward? Well, you know, Senator Tim Scott is an African-American. He's described being pulled over, I think, 18 times, even during times when he's been a United States senator. Uh, he has some great ideas, of course, making uh, lynching a federal crime. That makes sense to me. Uh, providing resources for body cameras and accountability, making sure there's not bias in our legal system. And let's not forget that we passed the most comprehensive criminal justice reform, and it was signed into law by President Trump in the last uh, session. And so uh, we can put that coalition together to address this need as well. But let's make sure that we preserve the integrity and support for our law enforcement, because at the end of the day, they have our backs, we need to have their backs. About five minutes left with you, Congressman uh, John Molinar. And as we look at the, uh, the COVID-19, also the economics and uh, the rule of law in this country, what else would you identify then as another major issue that uh, voters are telling you as you are campaigning for this office? Well, I think people appreciate the work we've done to build a new lock at the Sioux Locks, and that needs to continue over the next several years. Uh, that's going to be important for our manufacturing, uh, growing our economy. Uh, the other thing we talk a lot about is the USMCA and these fair trade deals. That is such a vast improvement over where we were with NAFTA. It's something that's opening up new markets for our agriculture. It's incentivizing more manufacturing and autos and other uh, products to be built here in America. And that means being built in Michigan. So we want to continue to build on that record of fair trade deals that really advance American interests and open up new markets, whether it's agriculture, manufacturing. You know, we want to make it in the USA and we want to sell USA made products overseas. Do many of these policies need to be tweaked at all, adjusted? Uh, because of, of COVID-19 putting a, putting a hold on everything, or can we simply hit a restart? How would you address these specific issues if you were reelected? You know, I, I think the underlying factors of our economy are very strong. We need to make sure we keep the tax policy in place that we 
passed uh, a few years ago because that's what one of the things that was helping drive the economic engine that was really fueling our economic growth. We also want to make sure we don't go back to the heavy regulatory po policies that were driving businesses out of our country and having them set up offshore. Uh, we want that in money invested here in this country. So those are things we need to keep focusing on. Uh, other areas we need to do in healthcare, we need to make sure we protect pre-existing conditions. We need to make sure there's transparency in prices for healthcare because ultimately we want to keep the costs of healthcare down and that's going to help all Americans. When we look at healthcare and return that to the uh, era of COVID-19, is there anything that we need to do to put ourselves in any better position to address uh, a crisis of this nature in the future? How would you approach uh, making sure that the country is, is prepared for such an occasion should it happen again? Well, we need to make sure our strategic national stockpile is up to date with the right equipment and a plan to distribute that around the country as needed. Uh, we need to make sure we're continuing to invest in long-term research on things like Alzheimer's, uh, cancer treatment, but also making sure that we have uh, research on new medicines uh, that will help, whether it's uh, antibiotics that help with infections from bacteria or viral um, you know, infections that we can treat with different therapeutics. One of the things I'm excited about is something called Operation Warp Speed, where the president has mobilized uh, the efforts of the governor or government, as well as the private sector to work on developing new medicines and a vaccine that will help with the COVID-19. And as you know, many of these vaccines are in round three of the testing, and we are optimistic that we're gonna have a vaccine by year's end. And so let's continue that momentum. At the same time, they're working on supply chains, bringing supply chains back from China. So a lot of our medicines that were being made and our personal protective equipment that was being made in China, we want to have that back here in the United States and then have the ability to distribute these medicines here in the United States as well as around the world. Final half minute then, the message that you would leave with voters as they get set to go to the polls. Well, we want to keep people safe and healthy. We want to rebuild our economy and we want to restore the trust in our institutions. And that's something I believe as we come together as Americans, we can do. And uh, I ask for support for another term in Congress. Congressman, thank you so much for your time and good luck with the rest of the campaign. Thank you, David. Appreciate it very much. And thank you for joining us here on Meet the Candidates. We have been speaking with the Congressman John Molinar, Republican of Midland, seeking a fourth term as a representative for Michigan's fourth congressional district. A reminder that all qualifying candidates for offices were invited to participate in this series. On behalf of ourselves here at WCMU, thank you for joining us, and we encourage you to use your right to vote on Tuesday, November 3rd.